Hey YouTube, today we're going to be taking a look at the Asus Thunderbolt EX5 card. So this is the latest generation Thunderbolt 5 based PCIe add-in card. We have covered Thunderbolt in previous videos in the past. There'll be a link to them at the top. Similarly, last year we looked at this card. So I just wanted to briefly mention this one. So this is the USB 4 PCIe Gen 4 card. This is basically adding USB 4. This card featured the Asmedia chipset for USB 4. So this is what is actually included in all of the X870E and X870 motherboards. So if you have one of those motherboards, you already have this included. Now, for Z890 in particular, the CPU, the Arrow Lake CPUs, feature Thunderbolt 4 integrated to the CPU. So you don't need this card unless you have a motherboard that supports the header to add Thunderbolt 5. Now I want to specify this is Thunderbolt 5. The Intel Arrow Lake CPU supports Thunderbolt 4 built in. So a motherboard like a Z890 Maximus Hero, for example, which we're going to be looking at here in a little bit, that motherboard has the Thunderbolt 4 ports, which are basically the same as the USB 4 ports found on the AMD variants of those motherboards. So this is the JHL9580 is the chipset that this is based off of, whereas the USB 4 card that we looked at with the Threadripper PC last year, this one is based off of the Asmedia 4242. Now, we've also covered Thunderbolt 4. So Asus also has the older Thunderbolt EX4 card. This one features Intel's older JHL8540 chip. So this is what you would add to like a Z790 type motherboard or Z Z690 or some of the AMD boards. There were some B650s that I know of that supported this like Tough and Strix and those sort of boards. But most of the newer AMD boards, most of the newer AMD boards already include USB 4. So you don't really need this card. This is basically for those boards that offer the expandability, meaning USB 4 was an option, but it wasn't like standard equipment. So that's basically what this is for. Now, for Thunderbolt 5, let's go ahead and open it. Actually, what I want to do, we're going to compare the newer Thunderbolt 5 card to the older Thunderbolt 4 and the USB 4, which is basically identical to the Thunderbolt 4. So just to kind of look at it, so there is a newer kind of logo here compared to the older Thunderbolt logo. And then on the back, there is information about the card so you can see it has three mini display port input and two USB-C form factor these are 120 gigabit interfaces so it even tells you the chip that it uses so that makes me wonder does the older one oh yeah so the older card the USB 4 card tells you as media 4242 so okay so so you can install software from Asus you can download some software from their website. You'd have to Google this card and go to Asus's website to download that software to be able to monitor the wattage because this does allow a lot of fast charging. It's the ports support up to 130 watts of fast charging. So that's up to 96 watts for one device. So let's go ahead and open it up here. Inside, similar to the USB 4 card, the unboxing is basically straightforward. Metal shroud here. You can see the Thunderbolt 5 logo on there. Now, here at the back, you can see the 6-pin. If you do plan on using the fast charge feature, you do need to plug in a additional PCIe 6-pin power cable. This is the same sort of connector that goes to graphics cards. And then we have the standard USB 2.0 header. This is to allow for USB signaling to maintain backwards compatibility with USB based devices. And then this smaller proprietary connector here is ASUS's Thunderbolt header. This is identical to the one that the USB 4 header uses, but you don't want to get them mixed up because the motherboard BIOSes from ASUS are locked down to only allow this card to work if ASUS has allowed the handshake in the BIOS to take place. All right, so what else do we have in here? Additionally, so you get the Thunderbolt header cable. You get the USB header cable. 
So you need to plug both of those into the motherboard and to the card for it to function with full capability. And then three full display port to mini display port or mini display port to full display port. So this is to make use of what's on the back of the card here. It has three mini DP inputs and two Thunderbolt, these are 120 gigabit Thunderbolt 5 ports. So why would you want to plug this? Why would you want to plug your graphics card into this? Well, if you want to run your desktop to a docking station, for example, and you want the video signal from your graphics card and your uh, other peripherals like the USB hub on the dock and those sort of things and Thunderbolt pass through because you can daisy chain up to like five devices on this just like with USB 4. If you want all of it to run off of one cable, you basically would plug all that and then you would plug this into and then the docking station would then have the breakout or the fan out to your monitor and your keyboard and mouse, all that stuff. So that is the main reason why someone might do this because I've gotten this question a lot. Like, why, what's the purpose of the DisplayPort input? Well, it's to consolidate the video cables and the USB cables all into one hub, typically a docking station. So you do get the user guide in addition to the card and all that stuff. So it's nice to actually get a paper manual here. So you can see it defines all of the different parts. It tells you how to install it, how to install the header cable, how to install the USB cable, and the PCIe cable. The PCIe cable is optional. If you're never going to use the Thunderbolt 5 ports to charge anything or quick charge anything, you don't need to plug this in. That's optional. It will function without that. In fact, we're not even going to plug it in on when we show the installation. Uh, and it talks about, yeah, so here is the integrated graphics going to the Thunderbolt 5 port, mini display port input, and then that's going to be output to like a dock or something. All right, and then it does show that you can daisy chain five Thunderbolt devices if those devices support daisy chaining, and you can also daisy chain four Thunderbolt devices plus one DisplayPort monitor. And this is because, this goes back to what I was saying, if you have a video signal in this composite Thunderbolt output, that DisplayPort signal if, the if there's a monitor connected, it will output to that, but provided the monitor supports that sort of data link. So usually you would have like a USB-C interface on the monitor. All right, and then you could do three to Thunderbolt devices and two DisplayPort monitors. And all of this is off of a single Thunderbolt 5 port. So this is actually no different from Thunderbolt 4. You can do all of this with Thunderbolt 4 and you can do all of this with the USB 4. I have tested all of this and it all works exactly the same. Here is a table on wattages. I'm just showing you guys what you get and then you get your FCC compliance stuff. So that's basically what's in the box. Let's go ahead and do a side-by-side -side comparison. Okay, so the older Thunderbolt 4 card, you guys can see one thing that's different is the older Thunderbolt 4 only had two DisplayPort inputs, but it had two Thunderbolt 40 gigabit Thunderbolt 4 ports. Physically, it looks very similar. They both have, you guys can see from here, this is an X4 PCIe. Now, the difference is the Thunderbolt 4 uses PCIe Gen 3 four lanes. This requires PCI 4.0 four lanes. So if you do not have a, well, first of all, if you don't have a compatible motherboard and you plug this in, nothing will happen. It won't initialize. So you have to have a compatible motherboard for this to even work. But the older Thunderbolt 4 was restricted to PCIe 3.0. Now, USB 4, the card we looked at last year, this one, now I can't show you this one right now because this one is inside my Threadripper system from the video that we installed it in. Now, this one requires PCIe Gen 4, just like the Thunderbolt 5, but it has the bandwidth of Thunderbolt 4. So just keep that in mind. So Thunderbolt 5 is the latest and greatest. It has the highest bandwidth capacity, uh, despite being of similar form factor. So let's go ahead and install this. Okay, to install the card, we need to plug in that Thunderbolt header 
just to the left of this USB 3.0 header as well as the USB 2.0. So what I like to do is I like to plug it in on the motherboard first because the card needs to go in this X4 slot down here and that could get in the way. So we're going to plug in the USB 2 cable. So we plug that in to the board like that. The other end goes into the Thunderbolt card right here. Line the pin out up so that's in. And then we take the Thunderbolt header cable. This is used for the Thunderbolt or USB 4 control plane signaling. So we take this, it's the, what is this, 14 pins or so? And we're gonna plug that in to the board down there and then into the card. You can see it goes in right there. USB is here and the Thunderbolt is here. Then we're gonna take this, see the hole, line it up, and it goes in like that. All right, now we need to plug this X4 into that X16 physical slot because that is the X4 slot on this motherboard, and that is Gen 4 X4. Optionally, if you want to plug the 6-pin for fast charge, you can go ahead and take a 6-pin cable, like this one or so, and plug that in there. But we're going to leave that empty. Okay, one thing I want to point out, so after installing the card, I went into the BIOS just to check to see if there's anything we had to do here. This is the integrated Thunderbolt. This is the Thunderbolt 5 setting. Thunderbolt, it looks like it's not enabled by default, so you are going to have to enable this. I guess that's all I need to do. So we're gonna save this. I don't know if this is required, but that's what it wanted. That's what it seems like it needs to have done. Okay, so just to verify that everything works, as we always do on this channel, I have installed two Thunderbolt 4K60 capture cards. These are AverMedia Live Gamer Bolts, so they require Thunderbolt or USB 4 for them to even turn on. So if you have the RGB, that means that they're fully connected. And I have tested them and they work. But the main thing I wanted to show you guys, I wanted to bring your attention to two things. In Windows, if you want to see the Thunderbolt devices within Windows 11, you need to go into your task manager, search USB 4. So USB 4 hubs and devices because that's how it's gonna show up. And then here you can see ASUS Thunderbolt EX5. So one of these Live Gamer Bolts, you see it right here, is connected via the Thunderbolt 5 card that we installed in this motherboard. And I also have the integrated Intel built-in one to Arrow Lake. So this is the Thunderbolt 4 port, which comes with the CPU and the motherboard standard. So this other second Live Gamer Bolt is plugged in to the back of the motherboard directly into one of the USB 4 ports or the Thunderbolt ports. So this is Thunderbolt 4, this is Thunderbolt 5. So that's how you verify it's plug and play. I did enable those settings in the BIOS. I don't know what happens if you don't enable those settings. Worst case scenario, the card's not detected and you have to go into the BIOS and manually turn that on like I just showed. Lastly, in the device manager, you will see this UCM, U, uh, UCSI, ACPI device. To get rid of this, you need to go to ASUS's website. You need to go to the ASUS Thunderbolt 5 page, the web page. So you go to the website, download this UCM driver from ASUS's site. Please install this, blah, 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 for watch watcher. So that is like a special little monitoring thing for the power draw if you're going to be using like fast charge. That's how you get rid of this in the device manager. Otherwise, it's gonna try to load some generic driver that doesn't talk to the card because it's from like 2006 and this card is from 2025. So we're gonna go ahead and download and install that just to prove this. So we're gonna install the driver from ASUS and there you go. And that took care of that. So now we have now it shows up like this, an ITE driver from 2024. So that looks a lot better. So that clears up the missing device in Device Manager. And there you have it, folks. That is how you get Thunderbolt 5 on an ASUS motherboard that supports Thunderbolt 5. Because remember, Thunderbolt 5 is optional on Z890. USB 4 slash Thunderbolt 4 is built into Arrow Lake. So that is standard equipment on Z890, or at least it's supposed to be to my knowledge. But Thunderbolt 5 is optional via this chipset, this add-in card, the JHL9580. Hope you guys found this video useful. 
Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about the performance of the card itself. So far it works great. And now I've got Thunderbolt 5 on my Z890 Maximus Hero. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.